All right, guys. It is a gray, gloomy, rainy day, Sunday afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And since I am trapped inside on this rainy day uh, with nothing else to do, you guys are going to get two Sunday Doomsday sermons uh, today. Lucky you. It is your lucky day. And uh, which one do I want to start with here on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021? I've been sitting on this one for a, a few days. So we're going to start out with here <clears throat> from, uh, I've actually had a sermon from this uh, fellow before, Tom Englehart. Tom Englehart, he's the guy who runs that uh you know, his website is Tom's Dispatches. and But he's actually, somehow, Tom Englehart uh, has some connection to the nation. And occasionally, the nation uh, picks one of his Tom's Dispatches to run. So this has been, was rerun in the nation and actually showed up on, uh, I think this showed up on... No, one of one of my Alert Tribes members sent me this. I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent me this. Titled, The Apocalypse Will Not Be Slow. <clears throat> All of us are in a new world, and we better get used to it. So, again, guys, like I try to do with my sermons, I'm going to put the link on here. I highly suggest... You go out here and read this sermon for yourself. Uh, this would, good Lord, this book length sermon. So anyway, like so many people doing, so many doomers doing uh, here in the early fall of 2021, uh, recapping the summer of 2021. But they all start sounding as the same. You know, so uh, Tom Englehart the first half of this uh, sounds like so many other uh, recaps of the summer of 2021, uh, but I think we've heard it all summer long, so I don't really need to, uh, I, as good as this is, don't get me wrong, it's an excellent summary. Uh, but we've heard it all before, and you should go here and read that yourself. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to pick up, and we're going to read the second half of the sermon. So he, he goes through his laundry list of how many ways we're doomed. <clears throat> and we're going to pick up here. Lest you think that all of this stuff that he just talked about represents an anomaly of some sort, simply a bad year or two on a planet that historically has gone from heat to ice and back again. Think twice, Book Hermit. A recent report published in Nature Climate Change, for instance, which I think I've covered here, suggest that heat waves that could put the recent ones in the U.S. West and British Columbia to shame are certainly and especially likely for, quote, highly populated regions in North America, Europe, and China, close quote. Keep in mind that just a few years ago, there was already a study suggesting that the North China Plain, with its 400 million inhabitants, could essentially become uninhabitable by the end of this century because of heat waves too powerful for human beings to survive. And of course, he has links all of everything he says, pretty much, he links you. So there's links to 30 other articles and studies if you go on the link to this one. Uh, <clears throat> well, where was I? Or, as another recently study suggested, quote, heat waves that smash 
previous records would become two to seven times more likely in the next three decades and three to 21 times more likely from 2051 to 2080 unless carbon emissions are immediately slashed, close quote. It turns out that even to describe this new world we already live in, we may need a new vocabulary. I mean, honestly, until the West Coast broiled and burned from LA to British Columbia this summer, had you ever heard of no less used the phrase heat dome before? I had it, I can tell you that. And by the way, there is no question, except in Book Hermit's mind, that climate change in its ever more evident form has finally made the mainstream news in a major way. It's no longer less left to 350.org, meaning Bill McKibben. It's no longer left to Bill McKibben or Greta Thunberg and the Sunrise Movement to highlight what's happening uh, to us on this planet. It has taken years, but in 2021, it has finally become genuine news, even if not always with the truly fierce emphasis it deserves. The New York Times, to give you an example, typically had a recent piece of reportage not an opinion piece by Sean Huber headlined, Is This the End of Summer as We Have Known It? Quoting the New York Times, <clears throat> this, The season Americans thought we understood of playtime and ease, of sun we could trust, air we could breathe, and a natural world that was at most indifferent has become something else, something ominous and immense. This is the summer we saw climate change merge from the abstract to the now. The summer we realized that every summer from now on will be more like this than any quaint memory of past summers." Close quote. And then he goes from <clears throat> the New York Times, of course, to the new IPCC report on how fast things are indeed proceeding with front page news and front screen news everywhere, as well as it should have been, given the research it was summing up. My point here could not be simpler. In heat and weather terms, our world is not just going to become extreme in 20 years or 50 years or as this century ends. It is officially extreme right now. And here is the sad thing. I have no doubt that no matter what I write in this piece, no matter how up-to-date I am at this moment, by the time it appears, it will already be missing key climate stories and revelations. Within months, it could look like ancient history. Welcome, then, to our very own not-so-slow-motion apocalypse. A friend of mine recently commented to me that for the first 30 years of his life, he always expected the world to go nuclear, you know, go up in a mushroom cloud. That was, of course, at the height of the Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. And then, like so many others, he stopped ducking and covering how could he have known that in those very years the world was indeed beginning to get nuked, or rather carbon dioxidized? Uh, this is my, uh, my uh, Airbnbers, but I'll have to get back to them. <clears throat> okay, where was I? How could he have known that in those years the world was indeed beginning to get nuked 
or rather carbon dioxided methane greenhouse gas even if in a slow motion fashion as it happens the time this time there is going to be no pretense for any of us truly ducking and covering it is true of course that ducking and covering was a fantasy of the cold war era after all no matter where you might have ducked and covered then even the Air Force's command center dug into the heart of Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado, he probably would not have been safe from a full-scale nuclear conflict between the two superpowers of the moment, or at least not from the world it would have left behind, a disaster barely avoided in the Cuban Missile Crisis of 62. <clears throat> Today, we know that thanks to the possibility of nuclear winter, even a regional nuclear conflict, say between India and Pakistan, could kill billions of us by starvation of nothing else. So in that context, I wasn't surprised when a homeowner facing his house his possessions and his car burned to a crisp in Oregon's devastating bootleg fire this summer described the carnage this way, quote, it looked like an atomic bomb, close quote. And, of course, so much worse is yet to come. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about a planet on which the Amazon rainforest has already turned into a carbon emitter or one in which the Gulf Stream collapses in a way that's likely to, to, likely to deprive various parts of, of the planet of key rainfall necessary to grow crops for billions of people while raising sea levels disastrously on the east coast of this country. And that just begins to enumerate the dangers involved, including the bizarre possibility that much of Europe might be plunged into a hold your hats and earmuffs for this one, a new ice age. If this were indeed the beginning of a world war instead of a world warm, you know perfectly well that the United States, like so many other nations, would, in the style of World War II, instantly mobilize resources to fight it. Or, as a group of leading climate scientists put it recently, we would, quote, go big on climate now. And yet, in this country, as in too many others, so little has indeed been mobilized. Worse yet, here, one of the two major parties, only recently in control of the White House, supported the further exploitation of fossil fuels. And so the mass creation of greenhouse gases, big time, as well as further exploration for yet more of them. Many congressional Republicans are still in the equivalent of a state of staggering, not to say stark raving mad, denial of what's underway. They are ready to pay nothing and raise no money to shut down the production of greenhouse gases, no less create the genuinely green planet, run on alternative energy sources. That would actually rein in what's happening. Tom, you just had to do it. You just had to do it in the last sentence. You know, I could throw this one right in uh, with my hopium uh, roundup on, on, on Saturday. Even, even Tom Englehart, uh, who I have a lot of respect for, is just another one of these lefties acting like Joe Biden uh, and the Green New Deal are going to do a damn thing to save the planet. But anyway... Uh, welcome to the slow-moving apocalypse, but I gotta wrap this up and, uh, 
find my lost Airbnb uh, guest. And then we're going to come back and once again uh, listen uh, to a brand new, right hot off the presses from my old buddy Rob Milkarski in Undenial coming up uh, as soon as I figure out my Airbnb crisis of the day. Bye guys. Little dog, I got some bad news. We're coming up. We have two sermons today. So we're coming back in a few minutes, but we got to find our lost Airbnb tenants. Bye guys.